Hello and welcome back to the Developing Solutions with Sitecore Print Experience Manager video training series. In this video, we'll be continuing the PXM installation process in order to add the training examples that we'll be using for our exercises. This includes the Launch Sitecore site, as well as the Launch Sitecore master document, and as an optional step, if you continue to do the workflow training modules, you'll need the dynamic workflow module from SDN. So we'll go ahead and start to install these now. So first off, we'll download Launch Sitecore from the launchsitecore.net site. Now, you'll either need to register, or if you have already registered, log in. And at this point, within the navigation, you get an additional section called Download. If you click on that, you'll see here that there are a number of download links and there are both web forms and MVC implementations of this site. My personal preference is web forms, so we'll go ahead and download that. And then we'll install the package on our local Sitecore installation. The instructions are here on launchsitecore.net. However, it's a very simple, similar package installation. So we'll go to the control panel and install a package We'll choose that package if we've uploaded it already. If you haven't, upload what you've downloaded. We can see here it's Launch Sitecore version 8 for Sitecore 8. And we'll say next, next. And very soon here we'll get a prompt in order to replace the uh, contents of the Sitecore content tree with what's coming in from the Launch Sitecore package. And so we're going to choose overwrite and apply to all, and then let the installation finish. All right, so once that package is installed and we go back to the Sitecore Launchpad, what we're going to do is we're going to spend a few minutes looking at the content itself that we'll be working with. And in particular, one of the reasons why I really like this Launch Sitecore site is that it has uh, a lot of real-world content, a full set of articles, and also those articles have a lot of the quirks that you'll notice um, within the rich text that's being used on the site. And so some of these quirks um, provide us some good real world examples to actually delve into uh, rich text transformations and ensuring that we catch those quirks um, to ensure consistent and beautiful print output. The other thing that we see here in the Launch Site Core site is that all the articles are properly tagged with a lot of metadata. We're using uh, content interrelationships. So for example, this article, the Sitecore UIs, is tagged with uh, Brandon Royal as a contributor. Uh, another little quirk here is that the uh, intro article is item number two. And so when we're starting to do uh, repeaters and iterating out through this content, we'll be able to see that, that you know what were the information architecture that we have here in your Sitecore site actually really closely matches uh, typically the information architecture for what you're outputting. And so, of course, there are different ways of doing that, uh, sorting things differently. Uh, but in general, you want your uh, structure in your Sitecore site to make a lot of sense. And the more structure that you have and the more intelligence that you have in your information architecture, the easier that is for automating that same information for print output. So now that we have our Sitecore site and our content, we're actually going to get our InDesign design from the designer, and we're going to open that file. Now this is on GitHub, and you'll notice a few things when we first open this. First off, there's a whole bunch of uh, missing and modified links. That's okay. What this is, these are all the underlying assets, and these will eventually come from Sitecore and our Sitecore installation. So it doesn't matter that these are broken for now. Uh, second thing is, on your installation, you're probably going to notice uh, pink text behind a lot of the fonts that we've selected. And the reason for this is that this design here and the typography that we've used is uh, Sitecore corporate branding. And of course, we have not distributed those fonts because we don't have the license to do so. So instead, uh, we suggest through this process that if you want those previews to uh, appear correctly, uh, you swap out a different font instead of what we're using here. But we wanted this to look good. So for the purposes of this demo, we have the correct font. 
and that looks that way. So we can go through this document here and see um, basically what we've done and done is taken a lot of our launch site core content. If you go through the launch site core site, you'll recognize a lot of this. We have background images, we have text, uh, we have articles. Those articles are tagged with contributors. Those articles have images within the rich text. All of those appear on the document that we uh, are uh, have received from our designer. And we're gonna import this document and uh, start to use this as the basis for our PXM project designs. And the way to do that is quite simple, actually. You log into Sitecore, and you'll see underneath the Libraries tab, you have this option for Master Documents. By opening this document and selecting Master Documents and selecting the Add an Item icon, that gives us a prompt to create a new item. So we're going to call this Launch Sitecore Design and say OK. And what PXM is now doing is it's going through this document that we have open and it's sucking out all the elements that uh, are common to uh, designs and that we're going to use across multiple designs and those include things like paragraph styles, character styles, and uh, the page spreads that you see here. So if I now close this document and go back to my libraries and say open, you're going to see that the I have the page spreads, which are you know, not unlike uh, Sitecore, uh, you know, layouts and sub layouts. And then I also have my styles, my character styles and paragraph styles. These are not unlike the CSS. And if you haven't already, if this is a new InDesign installation, go ahead and drag those and snap those here to the right. And so we've got all of our spreads and we can look and we can see here's a whole bunch of paragraph styles. And again, that's kind of like our CSS for our InDesign document and character styles. And again, these are kind of like CSS uh, as well, but for individual characters rather than entire paragraphs. So that's what the master document uh, is to PXM. It's really your page information, uh, character styles, paragraph styles, uh, other styling information, object styles, uh, variables, things like that. But for now, these are the simple things you need to know. We have our spreads, which are basically um, our layout slash sub layouts. So we can see there's different things on the spreads, different page numbering styles, different uh, styles for, you know, we're seeing the site and the chapter name. These are things that we're going to be uh, reusing across all of our documents. And so that's what we have now. We have Launch Sitecore, which is our Sitecore content that we'll be working with. And we have now our design provided to us from the designer pushed into Sitecore, but only those things that we need for the core of the design, that style information. And that is uploaded to Sitecore as a master document. And so you can see that here again in this Libraries tab. You can see that Launch Sitecore design. But also, if you go to your content tree and media library, there is a Print Studio Project section, and you can see the master documents here. And this Launch Sitecore design is actually an InDesign file. So PXM has stripped out everything that it needed, and it just took the core of what it needed. It has uploaded that to Sitecore, and you can see a bunch of properties for that as well. And you can see here some of the style information, and you can augment this and change this uh, after the fact as necessary. So that's a, that's a really key point as well. Um, the fact that you know it's pulling out that style information so you can see what that is. And then the last key point is that we have the ability to point this to transformation sets. And so a transformation set is really the ability to map uh, HTML classes and styles to those InDesign styles. And so given that you'll have many, many different style or master documents within your CMS uploaded, Obviously, you want to have the ability to have multiple sets of style transformations. It just makes sense. And so here, if we're going to be doing transformations, which we will later on, this is where we can say this master document uses this transformation set. Lastly, we're going to download and install the dynamic workflow module. Now, this is an optional requirement uh, for the training sessions if you're interested in using workflow in any fashion. Uh, I highly recommend using and downloading this. What this allows is essentially the ability to use the Sitecore rules engine, 
within workflow actions. And so uh, large monolithic tasks like uh, creating PXM projects or uh, updating a lot of variables and uh, printing off a PDF. Rather than writing one large workflow module, you can write those in chunks and reuse those components. And it, it really makes things a lot easier. Now, one thing you'll notice here on the Sitecore Marketplace when you do a search for dynamic workflow is that uh, the requirements are a fairly old version of the Sitecore CMS and the workflow module uh, does work on Sitecore 7 and Sitecore 8. However, you do need to do a change in order to uh, take into account the updated rules engine, uh, which works based off of uh, tagging and categories. And so after downloading and installing this module, we'll go through the steps of installing a little update that I've put on GitHub uh, specific for this training so that the workflow module can work with Sitecore 8. So to download the module, you simply click the download button. At this point here, you get two options. You can download uh, simply a package installation or you can download the full source as well. We will just simply download the package and install that to Sitecore. So back in Sitecore, we'll go to the control panel and we will install that module that we just downloaded from the Sitecore marketplace. Once again, that's install a package and we'll choose that. And this is our dynamic workflows package. And we'll say open, next, next, and install. And this does require a Sitecore uh, reinitialization because it does include DLLs along with that. So we'll install that and come back to Sitecore. So we'll reboot the Sitecore client. So now we're back on the Sitecore dashboard. We're going to go to the content editor and under system workflows, we can see that within our workflow steps, we've got these additional items. So we're gonna select one called workflow rule action. And I just wanna show you at this point, right now, when we go to the edit rule, there are no definitions for the rules and the actions. And this is because um, the workflow or rule actions in general, the methodology changed between uh, Sitecore uh, 6 and Sitecore 8. And so in order for these rules and actions to appear here, we need to install a package update that uh, I've placed on GitHub. So if you download that and install that, as we will do now, you'll see these rules now appearing as you need them to be. So once more, we'll go back to our trusty control panel and we will install that package and we will choose my dynamic workflow updates and PXM workflow stub. And this is uh, from GitHub and the link will be uh, on the YouTube video. You should see that in the description. So we'll say open and next and we'll install that and we're going to do some overwriting. And we will apply that to all and go through all the initialization steps and say close. At this point, now when we go to our workflow, And that workflow rule action and we say edit rule you can now see all of the uh, conditions and all of the actions for dynamic workflow have been enabled so all that package did was simply move items around such that the new rules engine uh, interfaces in Sitecore 8 can find them so at this point now what we can do is basically build up uh, conditions and build up actions as necessary for workflow and there are a few here that come with the module out of the box, uh, but we're going to be writing some specific to PXM later on. So now that we've got that module installed and we can see that the uh, rule and rule actions are updated, we're just going to go and delete that item that we had created initially. You can also see that the uh, second package that we installed installed a workflow called launch Sitecore article workflow and this has 
and awaiting approval step, it's very much like the uh, sample workflow that exists. Um, but at this point, we have a create PDF and a create PXM project item. And these just simply have uh, stubs within them. So they, they execute and they add messages to the log file so that we know that our workflow is executing. And we'll build this up later into actual uh, rules and actions that actually create that PDF and actually create that PXM project on the fly. So at this point now our Sitecore installation is ready to go for our training examples and the actual coding exercises. So regardless of whether you just installed uh, the PXM core and those core modules or whether you went to the additional step to install all of the dependencies necessary for automation within Design Server, either way we've now got our example content and our example design and similarly uh, the optional dynamic workflow module installed as well. So again, regardless of your intent, all of these uh, dependencies should be installed and we can move forward.